friend number two. See this cutie? Dan, what's his name? Jordan. Jordan. This is Jordan. This is uh, Tina's, Rook's son. That's Jordan. And that's Jordan Happy. <laughs> Trend number two, the rise of the mobile device. Does KM have an app for him? This morning, HP announced that it was buying Palm. Apple had a 474% increase in sales in the first quarter this year in Asia, record profits for a non-holiday season, and it didn't even include the iPad, right? BlackBerry's doing great. BlackBerry's eating their lunch in terms of low, being able to have low bandwidth and get the content out there. We have somebody from Re uh, Research in Motion here. Carolyn, where are you? Do you have order forms in case they need a BlackBerry? Okay. There is absolutely no question that that tiny little, how many of you have some mobile device with you today? Excuse me, yes, ubiquitous, always on, wouldn't be anywhere without it, scary, right? So that, and, mo and as Josh pointed out earlier, we're all working from home or getting out or we're out on the road. Do most of the documents and stuff you feed people fit on a little screen? No. So one of the things the advanced working group said is what do we have to do to think about how, what's the appropriate use of mobile devices for the delivery of information on KM? And I, we think that is a critical question. And the best um, training you'll ever get for that is the post-it note. This is the 30th anniversary, April, is the 30th anniversary of the post-it note. And I would like the two people from 3M to please stand up. <laughs> they are not personally responsible for the post-it note, but don't you think that that little size, I'm thinking the square one now, you know, is a pretty, if you can get it on a post-it note and it's meaningful and it causes somebody to do something, then you've probably done the right thing. Our conclusion was that mobile devices are People are not using them, by the way, to talk. They rarely use them for the phone, right? People are using them to text, to get alerts. That the best, one of the best things you can do is to use it to alert people that information exists and where somebody is. So this is from Forrester. Josh will appreciate this once you get out of your phone. Um, <laughs> the top three reasons for mobile device usage, I'm teasing you guys, let me pick on you, is people want the apps. The thing that is behind in the enterprise, apps is a brand new business model. Apps are hot. iTunes, Blackberry, apps are hot. This, we should have seen it coming, right? But hindsight is 2020. You have to live forward, understand backwards. This, what, apps are hot. But what doesn't exist are apps for KM yet. And what's more and more, there are not a lot of apps for the enterprise yet. There's a lot of apps junk. I mean, what percent of the apps on iTunes are junk? I know one, oh, give me a percent. 98, no, not that high. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot. So this doesn't exist yet. And the reason for this drive and this explosion of mobile devices is it's lower cost, increased functionality, it's ubiquitous, I'm, it's on me, I can use it all the time. I can get just enough, just in time, just for me. It's convenient. And the app makes it possible for me to do something interesting, and much, what's more, I'm on the road a lot of the time. So this is why we have to pay attention to it in KM. Mobile device considerations. One is access. A lot of you work for organizations where not everybody's got bandwidth or access to the internet, either for security reasons or because they're in the middle of the Saudi Arabian desert. Raise your hand if access is an issue for people in your organization. Yeah. Look at this is, I mean, this is not going to go away. So you have to think about all the other ways that we're going to do this for people who can't get it through the mobile phone. The type and amount of information, we talked about that, that alerts and knowledge that something's happening and where someone is may be more important to be able to get out. And then we need to give people guidelines for use. How many of you have Twitter-like capabilities inside your organization? Linda has it. We've got, we got three. So we got, you know, do you ever give people any guidelines for when to tweet or what to tweet about? No, just figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no rules is good, but no guidance is sometimes means that people don't know what to do. Now, from the IT organization, so you can feel sympathetic to them, there's the bandwidth question. Why do you think so many corporations block YouTube? 
Well, ignorance. It's not a, it's, you might as well try to unring a bell again, but it's also bandwidth. It's eating up, video is eating up tons of bandwidth. Giving everybody a mobile device is going to cost a lot of money. You got to make decisions about are there going to be enterprise apps? Who owns the device and the use policies? And if it gets stolen and, I wipe, and I'm a corporation, do I own the content on it or do you own the content on it? And do, can I wipe it or not if it gets stolen? So there's issues you need to be aware of and of course the security issue which is related to that. Can we keep it secure? And there are new um, offerings by the mobile device companies to help make that happen.